guys, it's Rose, and welcome to my office. Today I wanted to do the NaNoWriMo tag video. This is created by Christina, and I'm going to put a little link to her video down below, and it's a series of questions about NaNoWriMo. Obviously, we are getting to the halfway point in the month right now, and I know a lot of people try to do this right at the beginning of the month. As I explained in an earlier video, I got Martian death flu at the beginning of this month. And it kind of threw me off of my filming and posting his schedules, so I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you will still find this interesting, even though it's a little late. Maybe it will be a video that you are watching instead of reading, <laughs> instead of actually doing your writing, in which case, go back to writing, write your book. So question number one, how many times have you done NaNo? I have actually done it twice. Uh, the first time, massive success, hit my targets, it was awesome. That was two years ago. Last year I tried to do it again and it kind of bombed because I just didn't have the time in my schedule to do it and I couldn't find a way to make it and there was too much going on and I was planning the wedding as well and it um, didn't happen. Uh, question two, how did you first find out about NaNoWriMo? This I honestly can't remember. <laughs> I thought about this quite a lot. I believe that another friend of mine who is an aspiring writer um, posted something about it on Facebook a couple of years ago, and I ended up looking it up and thinking that sounded kind of cool, and she became one of my nano buddies. But I'm not 100% about that. Sorry. What is the name of the first novel that you attempted in nano? This is actually the novel that I'm uh, finishing my work on now, and the working title of it right now is Diamond Dogs. Yes, it's a reference to the song and to the language. Uh, give us a one-sentence summary of what you're writing this year. I'm actually not writing this year. I'm going to explain that in a later question, um, but I am working on the final edits of Diamond Dogs, so one word summary of that. Um, it's always so hard to do it in a single sentence. It's a multi-generational novel about coming of age within the framework of different forms of the sex industry. That will do. That sounds weird. Five, what's the best writing advice you've ever been given? Write every day is something that everyone says, and there's a reason that everyone says it. It's really, really, really good advice. Obviously now I do write every day for my job, but I want to find the time to write every day for the projects that are more creative. And the reason that this is advice that is given time and time and time again is because it is so much harder to keep that flow and keep that habit if you're trying to do it randomly or if you're waiting for this magical thing called inspiration, which can happen, but believe me, it doesn't happen 90% of the time. <laughs> so writing every day is important. Forming good habits to move you to where you want to be is such an important thing to do in your life in general. Other than that, though, because that's such a common piece of advice, the second piece of advice that I always use is to write drunk, edit sober. Not literally. I'm not literally encouraging you to go out and get hammered and do your writing. It's more about, I mean, if you want to, I do like my wine, um, but it's more about the mindset behind it. When you're first writing, just get it out there. And this is very much the nano mindset as well. Don't get too persnickety and caught up in the details. Write it as though you're drunk when you're writing it. Write it as though you just don't care, zero inhibitions, throw it all out there, don't worry about it, don't care what anyone's going to think. And then when you go back to do your editing, that's when you should start being really detail-oriented and caring about what other people are going to think and caring about how it's coming across and whether things work and the details are right. You sort of regain your inhibitions a little bit when you're doing the editing part. So that's how I take that, again, very classic piece of advice. Um, though in practical terms it works as well if you can get by bad handwriting and stuff. <laughs> Question six, did you ever take a year off from NaNo and why? This is what I wanted to talk about, why I'm not doing NaNo this year. I think that NaNo is a phenomenal way to blast out a first draft of a novel and to get you really motivated. However, I don't think that it's ever something that you should start seeing as like a requirement and doing just for the sake of doing it um, and bashing out a new one every year because 
then you end up with a bunch of half-written manuscripts and half-finished first drafts, and you don't have time to edit them properly, and you're just sort of doing it for the sake of doing it and not because you're really trying to create something. <laughs> for me this year, is for one thing, um, it's not a particularly great year for me to find that extra time that you need to write, and yes, I know there's never a great time, but there are better and there are worse times. <laughs> There are months that you can conceivably pull an extra 20 hours a week by giving up a bunch of other things, and there are times, like right now, where I'm just going, no, I'm. there's simply no time left. I'm not getting everything done that I already need to. Adding another thing on top of that would actually just, just be stress and just be pressure, and nano should at its heart be fun. It shouldn't just be a really stressful pressure-filled way to do things. The other reason that I'm skipping it this year is that I'm working on the final edits, and I'm really quite deep into it and deep into pulling my novel apart and putting it back together again. And I don't want to stop that in order to write something new. That would be really counterproductive to what I'm working on at the moment. Next year, however, I will absolutely be back on the nano wagon, <laughs> so to speak, because this one will be finished, and I will be wanting to get that first draft pumped out of the next book. Question number seven, what's the biggest inspiration when you're figuring out what to write? I find this a really difficult question because I have no idea where it comes from. I have a list of ideas as long as my arm, and I never sort of have to worry about coming up with a new one. I guess I'm very lucky in that sense. Um, and when it comes to figuring out exactly what to write when I'm sitting down and working on a novel itself, there isn't really anything external that I think I, I reach for to do that. Um, I think I reach very internally for this, for inspiration. Uh, and I just, I don't know how I do it. Um, a lot of people that I've been watching other videos of talk about music and movies and stuff that they might watch for inspiration. Personally, I cannot write with music on. I can't do it. It actually just distracts me. I find it is a huge impediment to me writing, so I write in absolute silence. Um, very, very occasionally when I'm doing editing work or going back over something, I will have classical or lyricless music in the background, um, but that's only if I'm going back over things or if I'm adding images to blog posts and doing that kind of admin-y stuff. When I'm actually creating the words, I need silence absolute dead silence. So I'm in the minority of that, but I don't ever use music as inspiration. It messes with my brain. <laughs> Number eight, read us the first sentence from one of your novels. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is actually printed out because I like to mark things up with pen on physical paper sometimes. I'm not a very computer organized person. I like, I have pin boards and I write things out and I will occasionally just write things on sheets of paper and be surrounded by them and I'm scribbling randomly. Some people I think just work better on physical paper sometimes and other people can do the whole thing on the computer and if you can do that, that's awesome and you probably are far more environmentally friendly than me and I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> In any case, first sentence from one of my novels, current novel obviously. There's a girl in a blue dress crying in front of my locker. And finally, why do you love writing? This is a surprisingly difficult question. And we'll get the, the very simple, practical stuff out of the way. Obviously, I do write for a living. I write freelance. I work from home. This is my office. You are welcome. Come on in. And I do enjoy the practical aspects. I like setting my own schedule. I like working from home. I like being able to do basically what I want and not being stuck to a 9 to 5. I like being able to work until 4 in the morning one night and work a 14 hour day and then not work the next day at all if I've got other stuff on or, or bash out you know, a quick half hour piece because I do like to write every single day. Um, I like having a limited holiday. I like not being confined to the cubicle farms because I have done that and it sucks. But that's not my reason for writing. Those are kind of perks on top of it, extra cherry on top stuff. Um, my reason for writing is, is that I can't honestly imagine a better thing to do. <laughs> that sounds somehow horribly unimaginative and uncreative. But I've written as long as I can remember. Um, um, I learned how to read at a very young age. I cannot 
physically remember a time before I knew how to read, and it's always been a huge part of my life, and so writing has always been a huge part of my life as well. It's just always been something that I feel compelled to do, I think. And I think the thing is that if, for whatever reason, I couldn't make it as a job or it didn't suit me as a job or whatever, I would have to write because I, I have filled piles and piles and boxes and boxes and boxes of journals because I just, I have to write pretty much every day or I start to become a very unpleasant person <laughs> to be around. I become very sort of tetchy and short-fused and generally miserable. Um, and I don't know what that is. I don't know why it is. As for why I love it, if I try to think about why that might be, why it's always been such a big part of my life, I love words. I'm one of those people that doesn't just love conveying the story to other people. I love the actual words that put it together. I like the way they look next to each other. I like the way they feel to be written. I like the way that they sound and that tiny little changes can change nuance and meaning. I really enjoy beautiful words and just the way they sound or look or feel. I get very passionate about actual language itself. And then when you add to that the fact that you can convey meaning, that you can string things together to take what is in my head and to put it into someone else's head, it's magic to me. It's a form of, of magic. It's transformation. It's like ESP. You're taking things that exist purely and entirely in your own imagination and hallucinations and giving them to someone else as a gift. And I think it's incredible. I think it's beautiful. And I cannot imagine anything in life that I would rather do. So that's it. That was my nano tag. Uh, as you've learned, I'm not doing it this year, but I'm wishing all kinds of hope and motivation and productivity to all of you who are doing it this year. I hope that you are surpassing your goals. I hope that you are finding it easy. I hope that you are having great write-ins and sprints and generally loving it and getting everything out of it that you could possibly get. And I wish you all the best for your finished novels. So have a great nano and have a great rest of your month.